Hello and welcome to Scoo Selects brought to you by Bet UK. This is your Grand National Preview and I'm your host George Ellick and I'm delighted to be joined by eight-time champion jockey Peter Scudamore and uh, maybe in in the in the uh, in the realms of this conversation as well part of the Lucinda Russell team which is ever so important over the Grand National Festival. Um, Peter you come to us from a car in the Aintree vicinity I think. Um, how are you getting on this Friday morning? Well, it's, it's, it's camper van actually. Not, ah, lovely. Yeah, no, not 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 belonging to a political party that's found <laughs> on the back of it. But this is my own. So no, we always stay at. Um, you know, it, it sounds a bit. Uh, I don't know what it sounds like to stay in the camper van, but I love it. I because we're here with the horses. Uh, we have a runner today, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Apple away. But, you know, I've seen her in the stable today. We bought two horses last night. We we're able to check on that. And I've just seen Gordon Elliott's horse is um, <clears throat> going out onto the course there. I feel a little bit like General Custard there with what Indians. I mean, there's horses everywhere. Um, his <laughs> string here is bigger than my first slot at the other yard. But I, I, And I love it because I, the professionalism of the staff here is is... It's fantastic. And working in my own yard, I just think, oh, my staff is fantastic. But then I look, you know, watch Joseph O'Brien's, Willie Mullins' Gordon Elliott's the staff, are unbelievably dedicated. And then it's just a tight knit team. And the horse, ma- the horses make them so proud of what they're doing. And that I feel that on this ground level, if that's the r- right thing, there's more of less of a jealousy when you move up to the top with owners and trainers you know we're a bit jealous of them i don't want their horse to win that here everybody is you know people come up to me my horse or hoist and got was second yesterday one of gordon elliott's staff came up to me and said you know when i was really down about it and then he comes to me that was a great performance yesterday and you oh was it you know and you you just <laughs> it, it's when you were getting respect from the people you really you know the, the those hard-working people that love their sport then then i think that's a lot of what it's about you know absolutely and we'll talk about the performance of a hoist in your in a second and douglas talking as well who, who we saw um in the um yeah in both uh both running runners yesterday both ran with, with immense credit and we'll, we'll get onto that in a second um in terms of entry itself what does it mean to you i mean i know your relationship with the grand national um it's obviously your uh you know Michael, your father won the Grand National in Oxo in, in 1959. You, of course, had a, a famous fall on, on strands of gold when, when leading. Um, what is it, the 21st? I mean, is it a place to you that you feel like you've got unfinished business with it, uh, even at this stage? Not so much unfinished business. I've just, when you're here, um, look, it, so Cheltenham is on a different level, a different intensity, whereas Punchestown and Aintree a little bit more fun mm. um, it, but it's almost more of a celebration I think so we're watching good horses and only sometimes the Cheltenham horses get beat so oh fair enough they mean to Cheltenham and it um, so little less intensity but there's if you go out on that track now I, I without being too romantic it's this is one of the great sporting stadiums and you can feel the ghosts of red rum and the and the, early in the morning when the mist's there and you look across, you can feel the ghost of the winner's pass, the jockey's pass. There is something iconic about this place that probably raises it above other, every other race course. Whereas, and also, well, the, as I say, the ordinary race is fantastic and they're, and they're good and they're slight celebration. But suddenly, if you're riding or working here, you know, training here, Tomorrow afternoon, it was at five o'clock, whatever time, it is a different level intensity. This is a this is the international. This is the the peak of what this is. We know that this goes way beyond uh the racing public, you know. Um so you know, this goes around the world, this race. So uh and it's probably the Derby, yes, but this is probably the most iconic race, arguably the most iconic race in the world. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I'm I'm someone this this year, thanks to the the birth of my of my daughter, was the first year I've missed at Cheltenham for about <clears throat> I mean, nearly the best part of a decade, and I've only been to Aintree once. But I was struck by just how magical it feels when you're there, and just how 
it's as you say just a massive celebration um in a way that feels very different to the Cheltenham Festival if you haven't been I, I you know anyone watching I couldn't recommend it more to, to go up there especially on Grand National Day uh, albeit it is quite busy maybe if you don't want to queue too long for a Guinness you should go on the on the Thursday um let's talk about the the racing yesterday and and you know, we have to start um with Ahoy Senor who ran an absolute cracker in the entry bowl looked to all intents and purposes as the winner between the second and, and, you know, basically up until jumping the last, where Shishkin, who, let's not forget, is a supreme novice winner, is an Arkle winner over two miles, who suddenly looks like uh, an absolute stayer, just managed to to outstay Hoysenor after um, maybe Hoysenor didn't quite jump the, the last as you'd hope. You know, I feel like in this game and way too much is made of of winning and often horses can perform incredibly well and and not quite have that one in the form book and I think that's the case with Hoyson your your range of emotions must go from frustration to pride now how are you feeling about the run uh, in the cold light of day the next day yeah every, you, you've summed it up ever so well I'm mean, Brian Brian Hughes rode him yesterday instead of Derek Fox uh, and I so I I feel something akin with Derek, uh, with um, Brian, sorry, because he's he's a champion, and being a champion, you know, you get spoiled. You, if you don't win, you, you know, all you want to do is win. And so I was, I was down afterwards um, about it, not appreciating the performance. And and the great managers in football or cricket or whatever would talk about performance. All it is, and rugby players. I, I'm, pals with a lot of the rugby people and they talk about performance performance that's, that's you know you can win and not have a performance I'd, um but yesterday was a performance you, you know to really romanticize it he went out in his shield i think that's why he's so attractive to the racing public it's what the racing public need isn't it you know he, he's mm. i've always said he's a very honest horse um in, um you know he, he he gives you everything he gave everything yesterday and as as i said one of gordon elliott's staff came up to me and said look what a fantastic performance all the other gold cup horses have struggled in that race conflated pool um he um you know to do that he just ran it and look he's been prepared for king george prepared for console chase prepared for a gold cup it's not just the racing it's the training to get them there um it was fantastic but you know then the honor you know as you said shiskin what a fantastic horse to be able to to do it over those supreme short distances and and come up and win over three mile and now he will take all the beating in the King George I suppose I, I don't know if we've got a price for the King George yet but um, he he will be um, the one they all have to beat in the King George and and to me this is what national hunt racing has over black racing is the continued continuity of that and uh, the racing public and people will be following Shishkin now towards King George which is an iconic race for us, you know. So it's it, it's fantastic. It's and it's again, it's good to be part of of the the good picture of national hunt racing. Yeah, Shishkin currently four to one, second favourite for the King George behind Brave Man's Game. Obviously, some uncertainty around Brave Man's Game's immediate future, um, but you'd have to hope that will be sorted by come come December. And the Brave Man's Game is seven to four with Bet UK. Shishkin four to one, Galapanda Champ five to one. And I, I completely agree. It feels like Shishkin is, is tailor made now for the King George. You know, you think that gold that gold cup trip at Cheltenham might be a little bit too much of an ask, but um, for the gold, you know, we often see those King George uh, winners who can't quite stay the gold cup trip <clears throat> come up trumps, and that does feel like where Shishkin will probably <clears throat> uh, come up next. In terms of you know where we are now with the Hoy Senor, it has been a you know. Given that you and I have been having these chats every week for the, for the whole of the national hunt season, I'm certainly uh, find myself rooting for for Ois and you're on the rest of the um, Lucinda Russell horses. I mean, where do we stand now in terms of of next season? Because it started maybe not flat, but with expectations not met. But then, you know, a huge win, a, a valiant run before falling at the Cheltenham Festival, and then and then a massive run at Aintree yesterday. Do you think it's the same campaign again next season? No, I, I I'll do it differently. Or we will do it. At least, and I'll do it. I suspect. I think we've learned from this campaign. Um, I was worried going back a step. You know, I knew we, we were stepping him right up into the big league, and I was worried that I could go through. I could come, end up here at Aintree, 
having not won a race and being fourth or fifth in a couple of races. And mm. um, so the Cotswold Chase victory eased my pain a little bit. And, and I was honoured with the way he ran the Gold Cup. And now, as a reflection, honoured with the way he ran yesterday. So now, perhaps I, I would may leave him to later in the campaign. Perhaps. I, if there's a, I might run him over to a shorter trip because he's so enthusiastic for his first run. And that next year, there's changed. There's an Aintree meeting. I think one of the Huntingdon meetings comes here around Christmas time, which will will take away from the King George. Which, um, but they, I think they're going to put a chase on round here around Christmas time. So I may go miss the Weatherby Haydock, may go try and find a two and a half, even a two mile race somewhere. Get the get gas out of him, come here, then Cotswold Chase, Gold Cup, um, back here. That that you know, that's a long way away, but those are the sort of things we learned this season with him, I think. And on to Douglas talking now, and you must have felt like it was history repeating repeating itself. Looked the winner and then just touched off um kind of between the well, made a bit of a mistake of the last and then t- then then headed kind of approaching the line um by the Henry de Bromhead horse dancing on dancing on my own. Um, you know, obviously not quite as big a prize as the entry bowl, but again another horse that that's run an absolute cracker and just found one too good. Yeah, yesterday's racing was you know, I'm trying to take the things just away from us, but the quality of racing uh, was fantastic. Um dancing on my own, um some kind of the owners of dancing on my own were the ho- own the horse at um, Corrick Rambler beat at uh, Cheltenham. So I was able to go up and say, you know, pull their leg and say, you've got your own back today. They've done to us what Corrick Rambler did to their horse at Cheltenham. So, you know, you've got to take the rough and the smooth. Um, to expand the story even more, Douglas Talkin is by a sire called Dylan Thomas, who was a very good racehorse, but was not a successful sire. And he's the same sire as Hoy Senor, and they look so similar. The only difference you can tell with me, who <coughs> who's not very good at recognising horses, the lads always pull my leg, but I can tell the difference between a Hoy Senor and Douglas Talking, even though they're almost identical twins. That Douglas Talking has two white socks on his hind legs, and therefore I can pick <laughs> him out, except when they put a boot on his leg. Then that confuses me. So he covers up his white socks. But if you watch them when they go round the... Um, top bend here you nobody's going to re- replay but you will see that they, they they've both got ears that they love it they love their racing and their ears are going like that they've great big heads on them so uh yeah no it's it, it's a tremendous honor to have these horses. and he, they both jump when they get um well uh, it, you know they're in front and in rhythm they jump fantastically so and then the other point i'm trying to make with this is that you know, the, because they're by dylan thomas who is was for some reason failed as a sire or became unfashionable as a sire, it means that we were we were able to buy them and, and, and compete at a high level, which is what we're trying to do, you know. And uh, we were at the sales last night. Again, it's been fascinating to watch them. I mean, you can buy horses at, you know, 200,000, buy horses at 50,000. But the beauty of national hunt racing is um, that you, you can compete at a top level at a, at a lower price. And I think mm. that gives us a, the edge over the flat. Of course, there's many exceptions to the flat, but the trouble is it's dominated by the huge, almost industries that are the, the behind them, the Wing Derbys and, and King George's and Arc de Triumphs and Go to America, that it becomes difficult for the ordinary person, if that's the right word, you know, where you're still talking 200,000 pounds for horse to take them on. But again, that's what national hunt racing has, that... Uh, you have more chance of, of of taking on the big boys at a lower price, and that that's what these two horses. I mean, you you these two horses between one hundred and ten thousand or something. You know, there, there was horses make, single horses making far more than that at the sale last night. Twenty thirty one horses went through last night. So it, that's the beauty of national hunt racing. I'm just trying to. I hope it's not too boring. I'm just trying to give you the insider back behind behind the scenes you know um and that's how i see it yeah i mean it was yeah as i say clearly a, a very impressive performance and um excited to see what the future holds for douglas talking as well um before we move on to the racing in the future i just want to ask you about constitution hill who we saw when in 
interesting fashion. I'm really intrigued to get your take on this because, you know, visually in terms of the winning distance, you know, Constitution Hill stepped up to two and a half for the first time. I mean, none of his rivals really got near him. Probably the closest they got to him was was at the, was at the line where Nico did have to, certainly didn't have to, to to use the whip, but but did have to push him out a little bit and, and keep him honest. I've seen some people say that it was, you know, didn't have to get out of fourth, you know, out, sorry, out of second gear. Seen some say that actually, you know, he was kept up to task as someone who's, you know, been been in and around the game and, and ridden some of the some of the best horses around. What did you make of that performance, and and how has your perception of Constitution Hill changed off the back of it? It's funny, right? So I remember talking to you when we saw him at Newcastle beginning of the season, and he destroyed a good field up there. And the owners, as in the owners bar at Newbury, he raced at Newcastle. And the people stood up and clapped him. And uh, and then I watched in the reverse. Well, yesterday people came up to me, you know, Constitution Hill's almost boring now. You know, because, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, look, he was a magnificent performance. He, again, you know, because of his honesty and the way he races, he, he jumped up in front and went. I mean, look, again, he's been prepared for these big festivals. They can't be at their peak all the way time. He probably tired a little bit. I mean, I thought Nico was going to do a procession uh, half he went to do a procession then he sat still and he looked and they looked they glanced at the big screen you see and then and to see how far in front they are and then mm. um he, he saw the other horses coming and he had to ride him out but obviously his um energy levels are down after a hard season but he again he's what we need in national and race he's the most magnificent horse um you, you he's not the horse you want to be that we would be backing but he he sometimes we we just want to and be entertained and he entertains us in, in his style of racing and his style of jumping it's so it's, it's fantastic now if he was mine i'd keep him over hurdles i hope they keep him over hurdles i don't want him taking um because he'd be very very good chase if he jumps fences but it, you know it's a dilemma they have to have and i think you know the owner wants to win a gold cup but um I it, feel, it feels a bit unlike i mean i don't know to my untrained eye the gold cup feels like a bit of a stretch after the, after seeing that yesterday Exactly. So, um, but but who knows? Who knows? You know, that's you know. Again, that's what this great sport's about. That's we we will be debating and looking for for the yeah, Nick. I hope you and I have got a contract. I hope they speak to us, ask us. <laughs> so the authorities are so um, impressed with us. They ask us to do it again. They can do something that we can talk about. Isn't it? Absolutely. Well, Constitution Hill is six to four um, favourite for the uh, champion hurdle next year. And you do wonder, you know, there was talk about, you know, Impero Pass going going wherever Constitution Hill didn't. I do wonder if, if Willie Munnins may have seen that yesterday and thought to himself, actually, you know what, maybe we should try and take on um, the horse that some are calling the best hurdler we've seen in a generation. Um, but that is our review of the first day of the Grand National Festival at Aintree uh, wrapped up. Stay tuned and we'll be previewing the next couple of days of racing. Hello and welcome back to Scoo Selects, brought to you by Bet UK. This is a Grand National preview. I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm delighted to be joined by eight-time champion jockey Peter Scudamore as we get his head, his heart and his hunch from three of the biggest races on Grand National Day at Aintree. And we're going to break, um, well, we've got two different changes here. Firstly, we're going to give you four selections in the Grand National and we're not going to go in race order. We're going to kick off with a big one. We're going to go to, straight to the 515, the Grand National. And before we get your, your selections, here peter just want to ask you you know everyone has an opinion on the grand national and we know that it's obviously a grueling stamina test and, and a real test of jumping although you know it should be said that we're seeing many many more horses um you know get round these days than we did back in your day which is obviously a, a fantastic thing what kind of profile of horse do you think you know suits who should punters be looking for picking their, their grand national selection well, I, I you know, even though I'm an old timer and uh, I like football when there was mud up to their ears and there was proper tackling, but as far as the Grand <laughs> National is concerned, um, I, I'm delighted with the progress of the welfare that they've done with the fences. Um, and therefore, the, the way they've altered the fences has... Uh, change the race you can go faster now because the fences are, are slightly not easier but but kinder 
features hasn't got the big drop drop on it. So you 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 need um I, the horses that win these long distance chases, like the cross country race, the the um that Warwick trial, the Welsh national, Scottish national. Um, these are the type of horses that uh, you need to to win it. Whereas before, you, know, you, you need you know, Red Roman; those were different class horses. Yeah, absolutely. But let's see. You know, these Grand National winners go down in history forevermore. Um, and we're going to give you two head selections here. I'll run through the market quickly with Bet UK. They are paying six places, so a fifth or six with an each way plus here. And it is, of course, Korak Rambler, who is the thirteen to two favourite. So we'll get on to. Korak and just a second Cheltenham Festival hero, of course. Uh, Delta Work seven to one. Noble Yates last year's winner eight to one. Guyard de Mesnil and Mr. Incredible both twelve to one. Any second now. Longhouse Poet Lamilos ain't that a shame? All fourteen to one. Sixteen to one. Capadano and Vanillier eighteen to one. Galvin our power twenty to one. Bar those. And for the head selection, we're giving you two of those, and it is the two that. Just sit behind Korak in the in the betting in Delta Work and Noble Yates. Yeah, it's very easy to. I'm going to give you a, a big outsider later on, but I do think the market's got it right. Um, starting with Noble Yates, I mean, he, he we know he won the Grand National last year. He ran a brilliant trial in the Gold Cup last time. Um, the hope I have with Korak Rambler towards him is Korak Rambler beat him at Cheltenham last year and now meets him, but it's the weight that I think will be um, Noble Yates, 11-11. And I do feel you know, the, the, the weights, you know, was it Admiral Rouse, was we worked the pound for pound um, in the 18th, 19th century on pound a length. But I, I do think when you step up as, to these huge stamina tests, I think weight really hits harder. Now, the ground will help Noble Yates more because you know, it's not such a test and stamble but still 11 11 on his back is a massive thing and that might just um weigh him back towards him and give Corrick Rander a chance same with Delta work he ran he's clearly a class horse he clearly stays the trip well he ran well in the race last year I think the Gordon Elliott team feel he's slightly better going into this race uh than last year but that's perception uh but he's his trial at Cheltenham was good, and um, I think um, you know the, the Golvin was second. Right, there's many horses I can mention in this race. You know that those those type of horses, the class horses, um, as I said, these long distance staying chases uh, ha- have a great chance. On to the heart now, and it is of course Corat Grambler. Um, how are you feeling? I mean, it's we're here. It's it's the day before the Grand National, going into it with the with the favourite. Well, it's two things. On, on the, the one hand, I, and I'm too close to him, um, and, and I like him too much. But I, I can't take away giving him his opportunity of, of greatness. I mean, he's already winning two Chelten Festivals. Has taken him to a, a hero cult in our yard, a cult hero in our stable for doing that. But um, look, I think it's he loves racing. You, you, uh, he doesn't. If you put him in the paddock, he's fed up after 10 minutes. He's an intelligent horse. He, he wants his mind occupied all the time. He, he's a fantastic athlete. So that's that's the uh, emotional bit of it. Um, the, the hardness of it is that look, he has been placed over three mile five round Warwick to, and stayed on. He clearly gets <coughs> it, got it wrong with him that day. Handicap. And whatever I say... You know, his coat shining and his eye looks bright and he did a lovely piece of work. It makes no difference. that We, we mentioned with Noble Yates and Delta World, weight, weight defines whether they win or not. Handicapper says he's £10 well in and, you know, therefore he can run £10 below what he ran at or Cheltenham and still win. So, and I think he, mm. he's capable, you know, his, star, his style of racing is... You know, is it suits him to get a long distance, but obviously um, he has to have a, luck, a bit of luck in running. But that, we have to have a bit of luck in everything you do in life. So you know, there's no way you can say he will win. He has an outstanding chance, and um, that's all I can ask. 
Fingers crossed. I think everyone who's been watching Scoot Select over the course of the season will be cheering Corrupt Rambler on. I certainly will be. And um, hopefully we're talking next week about a glorious Grand National victory at Aintree. Um, for those who are watching, though, who are saying, hold on, Peter's just put up the, the top three in the market. Well, hold your horses because we have the heart, the heart selection and a 50 to one shot, Eva's Oscar. Yeah, Eva's Oscar is a horse that fascinates me because Corrupt Rambler just beat him round Chel- Cheltenham uh, in Correct second run over fences, and so uh, third run over fences actually. So I thought he's 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 a stayer. He fits the profile to run well in a in a race like that. So if you wanted to, what are we going first six? Did you say first six? Yeah, yeah. So if you want something the first six, so that's why I'm able to come up with more horses to tip because we're going for the first six. Um, so um, <laughs> Ava's. Oscar is the one I put in for that. Brilliant. Eva's Oscar, 50 to 1. A big price selection there as the hunch for Peter in the Grand National. Um, that's the last we'll talk about it until after the race. But best of luck to, to Peter and to Korak Rambler backers as well. Uh, on, We'll go back in time now to the 3 o'clock. It is the Novice Hurdle um, where we have got... Um, Hermes Allen is the 7 to 2 favourite after being really well backed in at the Chatham Festival and and not running really any race at all in the um in the Ballymore. Um at seven to two. Dark Raven nine to two. You wear it well five to one. Irish point six to one. Springwell Bay nine to one. Let's be clear about it. Ten to one. Twelve to one bar those. But your head selection is for the Irish. Irish point. Yes. Um I, I could have gone with Hermes Allen, obviously, but the reason I've I've steered away from Hermes Allen is it, 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 I tipped him at Chant. He let me down a little bit, so I'm a bit bitter about that and uh, I'm going for Irish Point um, one of Gordon's who didn't turn up to Cheltenham and uh, must have an outstanding chance and next up the heart selection it is uh, for the Jamie Snowden team you wear it well yeah um, he, he's a horse I really like or she even is a, she is a horse I really like I was particularly impressed with her at uh, Sandown and then she's come and won at uh, Cheltenham, um, and and she's got to get over the Cheltenham bounce. But uh, it was a very very good performance last time, and uh, I believe she deserves the utmost respect in this race. Yeah, no, she absolutely does. Um, and then your hunch. So normally a bigger price fancy, but this but here Dark Raven at nine to two, the one you want to you want to side with. Yeah, one of William Ollenzi's. Um, probably didn't run quite as well as he could last time uh, a little bit like Hermes Allen but um, Willie's sent a small but select team over here to Cheltenham so the fact that he sent him over will be uh, is, is worth um, taking note of yeah you'd think so not not just going to uh, make up the numbers you wouldn't think um, we'll move on now to the final race of the preview here this is the 335 um, where Marie's Rock, another one who ran a disappointing race at Cheltenham, still heads the market here at four to one, ahead of Flooring Porter at five to one. Home by the Lee, eleven to two. Side of Burley, the stay is winner from the festival, eleven to two. Champ, thirteen to two. Dashel Drasher, seven to one. Ten to one bar those. Home by the Lee, your selection here. Yeah, disappointed at uh, Cheltenham last time, but uh, Joseph's Stringer in fine form. His horse we'd been talking about throughout the season, a horse called Bambridge that we marked up many times through the season. Mm. One the opening race on the opening day. Um, and I think Home by the Lee can bounce back after a slightly disappointing run last time. Home by the Lee, the head. Uh, the heart goes to Dashel Drasher. Yeah, small stable and Jeremy Scott does particularly well. Uh, there was a commotion over whether he should have been kept second place or not last time. He's run very well. He beats um, Poison Year of Offences around here. He's a real tough horse. And... Um, so he performs around the track, and at eight to one, I thought, but not only is my heart with him, he, he can um, he can run a big race. Yeah, seven to one, Dashel Drasher is uh, the heart, and the hunch, uh, Flooring Porter. Yeah, a former winner of the uh, Cheltenham race. I just thought this track would suit him well, and I think he can run a big race for Danny Williams, Danny Mullins, even, and Gavin Cromwell. Excellent stuff. Uh, there we go. Uh, you can find all of Peter's tips on the left-hand side of the Bet UK site under Scoo Selects. 
And uh, as I say, all of us wishing you all the best. Um, you have a runner today for those who are watching this on Friday. Um, and the is it a four forty uh, Apple away? What can you tell us about Apple away's chances? Currently a ten to one shot with Bet UK. Yeah, I think probably short. Yeah, I think she's got a right. She's, um, I think she's right each way chance. Um, she might drift a little bit, so I'd maybe sit and wait. Um, mm. To see what happens, I think there'll be money coming in for Max a million. Uh, stay away, play one at Cheltenham, and and I, as I say, I was speaking to Willie's lads, uh, sorry, Gordon's lads this morning, and they, they really fancy this absolute notions. Um, he's stepping up from two to three mile today, um, but you know, going back to uh, Apple away, she's very like. Uh, Douglas talking and uh, Senor, she'll wear a heart in the sleeve. I think we talked about her before. I think I tipped her up at she won at Doncaster uh, last time. Um, although she's a lady, you want to meet her and down the dark alley at night because if she gave you a backhander, you'd know about it. I mean, she's she's, uh, she's the most beautiful filly. She's muscular, proud of herself. I'm doing that with my chest because she's chest and she walks. She's so proud. And she marches when she walks. She's a very, very you know, she rises to the um, uh, to another level. Uh, I think the racing public will take her to heart because of her because of her attitude. You know, lovely stuff. Wishing you all the best, um, Peter. We'll be back again next week to review uh, all the entry um, winners and losers, and hopefully a quite round of famous win in the Grand National next week. So do join us then. Thank you very much, Peter, for all of your insight, stories, and tips. As ever, thank you very much for watching this episode of School Selects. Best of luck with the rest of the Grand National Festival and the big race itself. Please do ensure you're gambling responsibly. Follow us on social media at Bet UK Official and check out Bet Bet UK for all of your betting needs ahead of Grand National weekend. Mm-hmm.